Raise your hand if you remember this awesome oldie. If there were no such thing as double stops, it would sound like this. Not as cool, right? Well, today we're going to talk about that thing, double stops, that makes it sound so cool. And welcome to... What is a double stop? Well, it's just a guitar player term for something the rest of the world calls dyads. And usually when a guitar player says a double stop, they mean it within the context of lead playing parts, not a compositional part of the song. So you wouldn't use the term dyad to refer to say power chords, which are two notes, or some things that you're gonna play, even in a song like say, Smoke on the Water. Technically those are double stops, but they're not usually gonna be referred to by a guitar player that way. They're gonna talk about it more within, like I said, a lead guitar part. So today we're gonna to talk about the many different ways you can use them in leads, and I'm gonna throw a bunch of them at you so you can take them in and get some ideas of your own. Now the first way is to use the basic fourths. It was the most common way and originated with the composer of that song that I played in the beginning there. And that is just playing, if you're doing it say on the first and second string, you would play notes that are right on top of each other. So if I did the fifth fret here, it would be an E and an A. And you know, in the context of that rockabilly, type of thing, it gets used often that way. It also often gets used in conjunction with the bend, which was also something from Johnny B. Good. That kind of thing. These are all riffs that you've heard many times before, probably because they're associated with the very origins of rock music and rock guitar. So that's just fourths, and I call it fourths, by the way, because it's the fourth note in a major scale. So if you had do, re, mi, fa, one, two, three, four, they're a fourth apart, so those ones that are stacked. Now if you play them instead on the B and the G string, the third and fourth string, they're not gonna be right on top of each other like that because the way the guitar is tuned where it's a little different, they end up being where they're apart in this manner. So you'd have like, say the seventh fret, this is a D, your fourth is not there right under it, but it's one fret up. So you have D and G there, which if you had a D and a G here, same notes. And that kind of fourth is really useful for when you combine a bend with a double stop. So you have this, and you could bend the lower note. Great way to start a ripping kind of pentatonic solo. It's got a nice kind of screamy sound to it. So what happens if I play that note where it's stacked right on top of it? I said it wasn't a fourth, it was a third. You have a different double stop here, and it's kind of happy sounding. It happens to be a major third. has a whole new sound. Now with this, using the thirds, you have to understand a little bit of theory, where to use majors and minors. That's a whole nother lesson here. And I kind of have a thing on chords and modes and all that, but I'll link the one about the chords up here. Um, but just briefly, if I want to mix major and minor thirds, and, I'm, and you're going to be able to hear where they're right or wrong before you even learn theory. So if I'm going to play something, say, in G major, and I play these kind of double stop thirds, It ends up being a different one up there. If you played the other one the same way, you would hear that it doesn't sound right. So it ends up being that this is a major third. They look like this, where it's one fret apart. Here it's the eighth fret and the seventh fret. And the minor third would be two frets apart. So it'd be like the eighth and the sixth. So you move around and play them. Again, you're gonna kind of be able to suss it out with your ears. And the same thing happens where it's a little different on the B and the G string. That was the fourth, you have the major third and the minor third. So the major is stacked here on top of each other. The minor is one fret apart. And these work really good either in that kind of moving along sense like I was doing there. Uh, or you can use them in a blues sense where you even bend both notes at the same time, say with the uh, major third here, like a... Sounds really good. Another common double stop is something called a unison bend, and it's called unison because you're bending up to the same note. So say I'll do this in E minor here. I have an E, and I have this note here, D, which is a seventh apart. But I'm gonna bend this D 
up to the E. This is an E. This is an E. It's got a cool sound like you're tuning the guitar, but it sounds very cool in the context of a lead. Something you hear in a song like Run to the Hills from Iron Maiden. Now, usually you only hear guys doing the unison bends off of a minor seventh like that, where they're apart three frets, right? I like to do them off of uh, a major position where I'm four frets apart. So if I'm, say, again, in the key of G, I could have over here, this is D, E, F sharp. This is in G. So it's just a half note bend. Those are all double stops there. I love the way they sound. Now, as a little bonus tip for you, I had to use my cool effects somewhere. Notice when I do the bends there on the unison stuff, I'm not just bending with the one finger. Even with any, any bends, this is true of. If you can employ more than one finger, it really helps. So that's hard to do when I'm only using these two fingers. I put the finger behind it to work too. So I'm bending actually with two fingers. It's really helpful. So that's thirds and fourths and unison bends, which are based on sevenths. You can also do something with fifths. Fifths look like power chords. Say I'm on these strings here. They don't get used in leads too much. I find myself using them more in like a buildup thing at the end of a solo. I might be playing a bunch of single note stuff and then trying to get to the end of the solo. And resolving to the root note of the chord that way. That's something that I do. I don't see it used all that much though. And the last kind of double stop, if you will, that doesn't even often get called a double stop, but we should talk about it, is the sixth. And you play these one string apart, actually. They're broken up. So I would have, again, if we're counting scales, so say I'm on C here and I want to go up Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, that's six. A, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. The A is also right here. This note is here. Because you don't want to be stretching like that to play a six. Kind of got the other string in there, but that's how you use those. Uh, the six have that really kind of, I don't know, is it bluesy bayou feel, whatever you want to call it, but just so you're aware of them. They're also major and minor, right? Where it's stacked like that. I have the major one there and then I have a minor one there. So when they're stacked, they're major. When you go back and it's one fret apart, plus the skip string, it's minor. So I just threw a whole bunch of ideas at you really quick there. Hopefully, you know, you can pause and look at them. I just wanted you to see what they are and not get too deep into the theory of it, just so you're aware of their existence and you can try to make use of them in your solos and find a cool way to use double stops and make something musical for yourself in your own way. there was me using them in context. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll get back to everybody as soon as I can. And until next time, guys, keep making great music. Hey friends, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. It makes the whole world better.